Thank you, Ron. Just a little bit of background uh, with respect to Mr. Uh, Mr. Albert, and we are objecting to this, uh, this Rule 17 motion. Um, Kevin Albert's a 19 and a half year veteran of the Canton Police Department, extremely well respected, extremely well liked. Any insinuation that he participated in a conspiracy or a cover up is simply untrue. Um, there's been no showing how personal communications uh, between my client and Mr. Higgins have any relevance here, let, al let alone evidentiary value. Um, Kevin Albert is not a Commonwealth witness. He did not testify in the federal grand jury. And his uh, involvement is essentially zero. Um, this is a clear intrusion, as Attorney Connolly indicated, into the privacy rights uh, of these individuals. And I've advised Kevin that there is simply no reason to acquiesce to something that's just clearly a fishing expedition. Um, so upon my advice, Kevin Albert is objecting to this Rule 17 motion, but uh, we will honor and respect the court's decision and appreciate the time to supplement any, any response in writing um, after we've, we see the motion and affidavit, which hasn't been provided to us yet. Okay, thank you very much. All right, Mr. Unetti, did you want to respond or no? No, I would just move to the next motion if the court were ready. Okay, so we'll move on to the next motion. Uh, uh, Mr. Lally, you didn't want to add anything, did you? No, thank you. Okay. All right, so this motion concerns Brian Albert, Kevin, Kenneth Berkowitz, Brian Higgins. Yes, and uh, Your Honor, with the court's permission, I'd like to start with uh, Brian Higgins with regard to this motion. All right, so uh, Mr. Lally, is it safe to assume you did not provide <laughs> or you didn't comply with my order um, in, in providing the motions and supporting affidavits on this as well to the third party record holders and their lawyers? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. So the council will receive copies of this as well and then be permitted to argue now and supplement it. All right. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Um, as I previously mentioned, Brian Higgins did testify before the federal grand jury. And at that time, he was specifically asked if on January 29th of 2022, he made any phone calls when he got home. He said that he did not. He testified that he lived alone. He testified that he was alone that night. He testified there was nobody else in his bedroom. He testified that when he went to bed, he placed his phone on the bedside table. After making those admissions, he was confronted by a federal prosecutor with his phone records. Those records revealed that Brian Albert called Brian Higgins at 2.22 in the morning on January 29. Those records reveal, moreover, that 17 seconds later, Brian Higgins called Brian Albert back, and that call lasted for 22 seconds. Now, when he was first confronted, Brian Higgins first tried to claim that it had to have been a butt dial. Um, that term butt dial is used by many of the Commonwealth's witnesses to explain the many calls between them and among them. And I, I've never seen a case where there have been so many butt dials, to be frank. Uh, but Mr. Higgins was already locked in. He already testified his phone was on the bedside table. His butt was in the bed, the phone was in the table. The, the, the two could not have met, Your Honor. There was no possibility of a butt dial. And then Higgins admitted that. And that wasn't Mr. Higgins leaving Brian Albert a voicemail. He also admitted under oath that the toll records would have reflected a voicemail if they went to voicemail. He admitted that to call Brian Albert back, he would have had to first reach for his phone, then unlock it with the passcode or face ID. Then he would have to press on Brian Albert's number. And that is exactly what he did. And he testified that that was what he did. He also testified that nobody from the Commonwealth, not Trooper Proctor, not ADA Lally, no one has ever asked him about that phone call from Brian Alberts to, to Higgins, or the, refer, the return phone call from Higgins to Albert, lasting 22 seconds. Rather than get everyone's phone records, as this court knows, the Commonwealth has fought the defense at every turn in our quest to get the phone records. They've persuaded this court that we were previously on a fishing expedition. To the extent the court once thought otherwise, it is clear this is no longer a fishing expedition. We do not have to go fishing to wonder anymore whether calls were made. We now know that someone who had been in that house when John O'Keefe arrived 
called the homeowner at 2.22 in the morning, three and a half hours before Joan O'Keefe's body was found on the homeowner's lawn. We learned that neither party to that call ever revealed to police, investigators, or prosecutors that they connected by phone in those early morning hours, just like Jennifer McCabe never revealed that at around the same time she was Googling, asking how long it took for someone to die in the cold, a search that the FBI confirms happened at 2.27 in the morning, again, about three and a half hours before Joan O'Keefe's body was found. Now, for his part, Brian Albert also first tried to claim that his phone call to Brian Higgins at 2.22 in the morning was a butt dial. He said that he was awake and watching TV, but he was called back to the grand jury to testify a second time. The second time, Brian Albert changed his testimony to say that at 2.22 in the morning, he and his wife were in bed in an intimate situation. He claimed that he had his phone with him in the bed. So now he's claiming that it was during that intimate situation with his wife that he supposedly butt-dialed Brian Higgins. He had no explanation, however, for how his phone picked up when Higgins called him back 17 seconds later. He had no explanation for the 22-second phone conversation that followed. And it's worth noting that Higgins testified he never heard any intimate noises on the other end of the line either. Brian Albert tried to maintain that he butt-dialed Higgins. But again, that would mean that his butt also answered the phone when Higgins called back, and it doesn't make any sense. Both men denied talking to each other despite being confronted with that mountain of evidence by federal prosecutors. But it wasn't just the January 29, 2022 calls between Higgins and Albert. Brian Higgins' phone records, we, we learned, reveal that Canton Police Chief Kenneth Berkowitz was involved in interacting with both men shortly after John O'Keefe's body was found. And again, recall, they're supposedly conflicted out of this case. So uh, I'm going to, there's just a question I have, and I'll, I'll let you continue, Mr. Yanetti, but regarding the dates. So the, the dates of the records you're seeking January for Brian Albert, so January 29th to February 4th. Or 4th, 4th or 5th, yes. 4th. Fourth. That, that's what you're that's seeking. Fine. That's fine. Uh, and for um, Kenneth Berkowitz, January 29th to February 18th, and Brian Higgins, January 29th to February 18th. I need you to explain to me why those dates, why right. February 4th and February 18th. There was, there was testimony in the federal grand jury that Berkowitz and Higgins were, te were uh, speaking to each other up through the 18th. With regard to uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Albert, we had evidence through the 5th. All right, it's not entirely clear from the affidavit. Okay. okay. 